Happy Wednesday. I want to talk to you today about the only prayer that God will answer. He only answers one prayer. One kind of a prayer. People pray and pray and pray. Never get any answers. But I do. I do. I wrote the book. Small book. But I know how to get results when I pray. Did you know that every prayer should be answered? Every prayer should get an answer. But not every prayer does. I'm going to show you how to get your prayers answered every time. If you pray the right way. Very few people even understand that there is a right way and a wrong way to pray. How do you know if you're praying the right way or not? If you're praying the right way, you get results. If you're not getting results, you're not praying the right way. If somebody's trying to fix your car and they don't fix it, it doesn't run right, they did it the wrong way. If a doctor diagnoses you and gives you medicine that doesn't make you better, he did it the wrong way. If you pray and you don't get your prayers answered, they did it the wrong way. If a preacher prays for you and you don't get nothing, he did it the wrong way. But there is a right way to pray. And, and the Bible tells us. The Bible tells us in James chapter 5. And then Jesus told us again. Jesus told us how to get prayers answered. So I'm going to tell you how to do this. Huh? Say this with me. The rest of my life is the best of my life. The best of my life is the rest of my life. Everything I touch turns to gold. I am smart. Getting smarter every day. I am extremely talented. Great things are coming my way. Everything always works out for me. I am a wonderful person. Pastor Jim is a wonderful pastor. Pastor Jim is the ultimate pastor. Because I'm available and I get results. I love God's people. More than life itself, I love God's people. And when you call me, you become the most important person in the world to me. There is somebody right now who just sent me a text message because I saw it. She needs prayer. Now I'm going to finish this video and then I'll return her call. I'll return her message. I'll, I'll, I'll send her back a message and tell her I'm here. She can call me. But she right now is the most important person in the world to me because she has a need. She has a need. And I'm going to meet that need tonight. I'm going to meet that need. Before I go to bed, she will be taken care of. Glory to God. When Mary and I were struggling so bad years ago, we had no Pastor Jim to talk to. You do. And I know all the shortcuts. You don't have to struggle and study for years and years and years to figure all this out like I did. I can tell you, I, I got shortcuts for you. Hallelujah, huh? And I know how to do some of this stuff. I don't know that I know more than anybody else, but I know quite a bit. I know enough that I can get results. That's for sure, huh? Hallelujah. I know the only prayer that moves God. You Google how to pray, and I guarantee you, nobody out there I even knows how to do it. People head up large prayer ministries. They don't get any results. One man was on Facebook with me, had a he could mobilize two, three, four hundred thousand people to pray about something. He got sick and died. And when he got sick and went in the hospital for the last time, he said, prayers urgently needed. And there was hundreds and hundreds of people who responded to his Facebook request and said, prayers going up, prayers going up, prayers going up. And he died. Because nobody knew how to get him healed. Had he called me, I would have got him healed. I prayed for some very famous evangelists and got him healed. 
they call me. They need something? Famous people call me. I don't tell you who they are, but some of them call me. I get them taken care of. Glory to God. Football players, NFL football players, call me when they're broke, when they're sick. People call me. I get them taken care of. Because I'm the, this is the only phone number in the country where people can call and get healed or get their needs met. Glory to God. Call me if you need prayer today, if you need something. And make sure you call me when you do your offerings and donations so I can speak God's word over you. Amen. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. What? What kind of prayer is effective? A prayer of faith. Well, Pastor Jim, how do you pray a prayer of faith? Well, the way you pray that prayer is the way Jesus told us to do it. Jesus told me how to get prayers answered. Come on. Huh? In Mark chapter 11, he said, this is how you do it. Is it okay? Verse 24. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire anything you want when you pray believe that you receive it and you shall have it what well how does that work pastor jim well you have to believe that what has just happened is going to cause what you need to come to you. There is a large group of people out there in the country and they know beyond any shadow of a doubt that when they get me on the phone, they're going to get what they need from God. And they do. They believe they receive every time they call me. Now, there's some people out there who will question everything. They try to reason it out. Well, Pastor Jim, how's that going to work? And you don't know my situation, my circumstances. And 25 years ago, this happened and that happened. And it's all blah, 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 blah. They don't get nothing. But the person who says, okay, thanks. They're the ones that get it. Thank you. Goodbye. And God's power in the name of Jesus moves in their life and comes over them and gets them whatever they want, whatever they need. We have got walking, talking testimonies in our church of people who I prayed with and they received what they wanted. Because I believed they would get it and they agreed with me and it happened for them maybe not instantly but they got it because I know how to get prayers answered I know what the only prayer is that moves God Jesus told us he told me if I would just believe I receive it, I will have it. Kenneth Hagin got healed off his deathbed years and years ago because he was laying there reading Mark eleven twenty four, And he read where whatever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive it, you shall have it. And he laid there and he kept saying over and over again, I believe I receive my healing. I believe I receive my healing. I believe I receive my healing. And then he said, 
if I receive my healing, I shouldn't be laying in this bed. And he struggled to get up. And it was all he could do just to sit up and dangle his legs over the edge of the bed. And he said, I believe I received my healing. And he said, it was like somebody dumped a pot of warm honey over the top of his head. And it just covered him. And his legs started to tingle as they came back to life. And in about 10 minutes, he got up and got dressed and walked out into the kitchen where his family and the preacher were planning his funeral. Don't be too quick. Don't be too quick to plan a funeral. We had a man who had his daughter call me when he was dying. And she said, my father is dying, but he wants to see you first. I said, okay, where is he? She told me. So Mary was on vacation, so Jean went with me. And she was living with us at the time. She's gone to be with the Lord now. But her and I went up there. The house was packed full of people. And we came in, and I said, where is he? They took us back to him. And here's this tiny little room, and the people were just packed in there. Everybody wanted to see him take his last breath, and he was ready to do it. I go, I go on, out, 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 everybody out. I said, where's his wife? They said, well, he's, she's some, I gotta go find her, because I knew her too. And so she came, and when she came in, I closed the door. So there was nobody in there, but him laying there in a bed, gasping for breath. He was ready to die. And his wife and Jean and I. Sometimes you got to get rid of the unbelievers, folks. Jesus did the same thing. He got rid of the unbelievers. First in Mark chapter 5. So I walked, I went over to the bed. I looked down at him and I said, what do you want from me? Because he had called for me to come. He said, I want to live. Okay. In the name of Jesus, you spirit of death, come off you. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit of cancer to come out of him. He was full of cancer. I said, put my hand on him. I said, in the name of Jesus, be healed. I said, okay, you're all set. He's still gasping for breath. But we left. Went out to the dining room and the living room, and the place is packed full of people. All came from Michigan, where they were from, to watch him die. He was a pretty prominent person. I said, I said, don't get too excited. He's not going anywhere. They looked at me like I was from outer space. I said to the whole, and, and I mean, it got quiet. I said, I'm not kidding you. He's not going to die. Somebody in the back said, thank you for coming, Pastor. I said, you're welcome. Gene and I left. A month later, Mary and I were at Lowell's getting some stuff for our new house. And somebody yelled, Pastor Jim, Pastor Jim. I looked way down the aisle. There's some guy running toward me. It's him. He runs up and he grabs a hold of me and picks me up. He's swinging me around and put me down. He put me down and I said, what happened to you? Hospice had taken him off of food and water so he could die. He said, after you left, I started feeling better. I started eating and drinking right away. Next day I got dressed. Two days later, everybody went back home. He said, I'm fine. Doctors say there's no cancer in me. Power in the name of Jesus and believing I received his healing. I got him healed. He didn't have any faith. But I believed he received it. The way only prayer God answers is when you believe you receive. You call me. I'll do the believing for you and get your prayers answered.